Let's give a name to this compound. Now there's 11 carbons. And because the suffix starts with a consonant, we don't say an, we say ain with an e. Undecane nitrile. Let's name this compound. So earlier we learned about nitrile hydrolysis. Um, we learned that you can turn a nitrile group into a carboxy group. So by the way, this is useful if you're doing a synthesis. If you're trying to do a synthesis where you turn something into a carboxylic acid, well, this is a good approach. Earlier, we only talked about one other way of making carboxylic acids. Do you remember the carbonation, where we have a Grignard attack carbon dioxide? You might want to review that. Yeah. We saw that when a Grignard attacks carbon dioxide, that gives you a carboxylic acid. That's something that would be likely to appear on the test. I think that's what gave me a little bit of trouble, uh, actually. OK, so that would be a good thing to review. We talked about that. Um, so we saw that when a Grignard attacks a car carbon dioxide, Grignard plus carbon dioxide, you can create a carboxylic acid. And now we're seeing another way to create a carboxylic acid, which is nitrile hydrolysis. Um, but what do you do if you don't have a nitrile? Well, that actually doesn't turn out to be a big problem because it's easy to make nitriles by using cyanide as a nucleophile. Okay. So you can imagine, here's this uh, organic chemist, and he's got this, he's got this species. He's got the one chlorodecane. And the chemist said, well, I don't, I don't want one chlorodecane. I want to make this into a carboxylic acid. How could they possibly make this into a carboxylic acid? Well, they could say to themselves, gee, I know one way to do this is a nitrile hydrolysis. But that will only work if I can turn this into a nitrile. Well, that's not very hard, because cyanide is a nucleophile. It's not hard to turn this into a nitrile, and then they can do the hydrolysis. So this is a good way to solve synthesis problems where you need to make carboxylic acids. However, this only works if you want to make a carboxylic acid, well, with one more carbon than we started with over here. Because in order to make the nitrile, as you already saw, you have to add this carbon here. So we ended up with undecane when we started only with decane. That's true for carbonation, too. Because in carbonation, the Grignard has to t attack carbon dioxide, and that also adds an extra carbon. So both carbonation and this form of uh, using a cyanide nucleophile and then doing hydrolysis, both of these give you carboxylic acids with one more carbon than you started with. Carbonation gives you a carboxylic acid with one more carbon than the Grignard had, and this root gives you a carboxylic acid with one more carbon than the alkyl halide had. Of course, once we've got the nitrile. Carboxylic then, acid or carboxylate, correct? These will be right. Used. Okay. Um, depending on what type of hydrolysis you do. That's good. Ones. But we saw that even if you get a carboxylate, you could then add acid to get the carboxylic acid. One more carbon. And those are the two ways that we've, uh, that uh, yeah. my lecture or the instructor is concerned of making carboxylic acid. The yes. Grignard, uh, That's right. Carbon dioxide. And yeah. Then this, uh, That's right. Okay. Go through the mechanism here. Any ideas? So, again, these are going to be two separate steps. First, we add these reagents, and then this arrow indicates then we add separate reagents. Let's start with what happens with this arrow. Any idea about what might happen first? We'll kind of talk our way through that. Take a look at those original reagents. Any idea what might happen first there?
Have your textbook? Yeah, I had no idea how to start this. Do you know what type of functional group this is? It's um, it's an ether. Now it actually turns out that, or it's an it found, it's a, we, I don't know if we ever talked about what does this mean. This actually means this. Okay. What type of functional group it's is a, this? That's right. We, we should have talked about that before, but I never got a chance. This is just the conventional condensed way of showing aldehydes. We need to be familiar with the conventional condensed way of showing aldehydes. I should have mentioned that before. You can see that here we have a hydrogen and an oxygen. Well, here we've accounted for the hydrogen and the oxygen. So we need to have in our notes that this is the condensed form of an aldehyde. detour here. What type of functional group is this? An alcohol. Right. So notice that there's a big difference between HO and OH. CHO indicates an aldehyde, and the convention is that COH indicates an alcohol. And an ether would only be if it's uh, connected to another Absolutely. That's right. That's a good point. This oxygen is only bound to one carbon, so we know it's not an ether. That's a good point. You know what type of functional group this is? A carboxylic acid. Right. And this is also another way of writing the carboxylic acid. Any idea what type of functional group this would be? because um, that would require some hydrogens over here to get the right amount of bonding. This has to be a uh, ester. I think this would maybe also it might be written like this. Yeah. Oh, what was I saying? Um, this can't be a peroxide because you wouldn't get the right number of bonds because the carbon doesn't have any hydrogens. And this carbon has no hydrogens. This carbon has to, the only way to get this to work out is if the carbon has a double bond to one of the oxygens. So it's not a peroxide, it's an ester. Okay, so these are some common condensed notations that we have to watch out for. All right. Uh, how about this? That's an uh, amide. Good. And this? That's an ether. Here we have an oxygen bound to two alkyl groups. As you said, this can't be an ether because the oxygen is only bound to one carbon. All right, well, it's good to have all these all in one place um, because uh, instructors just tend to assume that everybody knows these conventions, but uh, most people don't. And of course, if you don't know this, then we have no, choke, we have no hope on this problem. Okay, so now we can see this is an aldehyde. So the first thing we should do is redraw. That's right. 
All right, this still might give us some difficulties, but take a few more seconds now. Now can you think of any plausible way that this aldehyde could react with these reagents? Any clues about what might happen here? At least what might happen first? The HCN is messing me up. I, I haven't seen that. Okay, well let's ignore that for a second. Any clues about how this reagent might react with this? Is there anything plausible the, that might? Uh, nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl carbon. You got it. So let's show a mechanism for that. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to make uh, hemiacetyl, correct? Or no? Let's talk yes. about that in a second. Let's okay. just try to run the structure. 